Hello guys, this is Katherine Donovan and today I'm going to do a very wonderful review on some creepy pastas that um, Mr. Nightmare did. If you don't know who Mr. Nightmare is, I suggest you go to his channel and see because some of his stories are added with jump scared sound effects that will really make your skin crawl and your heart jumping. I'm not kidding. It's really terrifying. But anyway, here we go. This one actually I found favorite in but it also freaked me out a bit and it sounded a bit like Five Nights at Freddy's but it's totally fictional. Totally a creepypasta, okay? Anyway, <clears throat> here we go. It's called The Truth Behind Chuck E. Cheese. And this one, it's not the one that Mr. Creepypasta did. It's a totally different one. It all started with a narrator who is just moved into this new town and he's looking for a job. Now there's going to be spoilers ahead, so I'm going to tell you guys this because I'm just giving you the heads up and I'm giving you a warning because like if you look at the story you're going to get some jump scares so be prepared because <laughs> this is Mr. Nightmare you know <laughs> but yeah anyway um where was I oh yeah so the narrator he's trying to find a job and he comes across a Chuck E. Cheese where it says help wanted sign on it this made the narrator curious so he goes in he even asked for an application and so the guy who works at the Chuck E. Cheese managed to get the manager the manager comes out and says will you be working maybe tomorrow that surprised the narrator and he's like yeah sure so the narrator got the job However, he never managed to give the manager his address or any other contact info. So, yeah. I was like, huh. That's pretty awesome. However, while the narrator went home and managed to research, he got a little bit dreaded on the fact that he had to also wearing the... Chucky Cheese mascot costume, which, yeah, he wasn't too thrilled about. But who knows? However, when he went there, the manager never mentioned about wearing the mascot outfit, which was a big relief for the narrator. The narrator was told by his manager, who was named John, to clean the animatronic robots and also like clean tables and stuff that sort of thing so that's what the narrator did but the narrator asked if the manager needed his address or any other contact info but the manager John just chuckles and says ah don't worry this is off the books with that he left without even saying good luck the narrator was troubled and puzzled by this but he decided to shrug it off so while the narrator was um, doing what he's supposed to do, he noticed that the Chucky robot looked really, really realistic and really creepy. It looked like the animatronic was staring. And while the narrator was cleaning Chucky after doing the other robots he finished, like the Chucky robot came to life and startled the narrator. At first, maybe the narrator thought something was wrong with it, but he went back to it, but he was still creeped out by it. Afterwards, a person came in to tell the narrator he couldn't go home, which relieved him. However, while he got back home, the narrator couldn't help but think about how lucky he was to get such an easy job. And Finally, the narrator fell asleep, but then he woke to hear a high-pitched laughter coming from outside, but he heard it from afar. The narrator thought something was up, so he looked out and saw a dark figure from afar. 
At first, the narrator was creeped out and pulled the blinds back up. However, he didn't know what to do. But when he checked, he found that the person who was standing outside was gone, which was a relief. So the narrator went back to sleep. He wanted to maybe tell his parents about it, but he claimed, but I didn't want to seem like a baby. The next day, when the narrator went back to work, he noticed that everyone was looking at him funny. They were all staring at him as if he had no place to be. The narrator didn't know what was going on. However, he was told to watch the animatronics. Again, the narrator is creeped out by the Chucky robot and how the Chucky robot was staring at him. It's the most creepiest feeling. Don't you guys really hate animatronics? I'm sorry. But if you guys hate animatronics and have a fear against them like I do, you can leave this video if you want. But if you want to hear more, then proceed. <laughs> anyway, so the narrator was creeped out until he noticed that this Chucky robot could not stop staring at him. And there wasn't much that the narrator was doing today. It was pretty boring and the narrator was like a bit creeped out by the robot. It wasn't until a girl came in and said, Hey, listen, you can take your lunch break now. The narrator pointed out, I haven't really done anything, so what's the point of my job? And the girl said, your job is more than meets the eye. I'm like, well, I would be creeped out by that if somebody said that to me. <laughs> the narrator was perplexed, but the girl was already gone. The narrator decided to brush it off as the girl is just a straight up weirdo. Then the narrator mentioned while he was having lunch, he learned that it was just percent off, which was nice. However, some guy came in looking all spook, and he told the narrator, get out of here. Get out of here while you still can. I'm like, when I heard that, I'm like, oh man, I'm getting goosebumps. I'm like, what the heck is going on? So, yeah. So what happened was, the narrator was getting creeped out by the comment he mentioned, and the guy was about to leave. The narrator thought, oh, he's just being an asshole. <sighs> what the heck's going on here? What does that even mean? However, the narrator noticed that nobody has come along to tell him he can go home. It was until then, the narrator noticed the Chucky robot was still staring. However, the narrator used a spray bottle he was given to clean the robots and sprayed at Chucky. Then the Chucky robot began to glitch a bit and there was this horrible noise squeaking and that was when the narrator was like oh no don't tell me I broke it but it turned out fine which was a relief so the narrator decides to leave but he noticed there was nobody else in the parking lot so he decided to go home and leave the door open for somebody to close up the narrator walked home, thinking about how odd these people were. How they were staring at him, and that one girl, and the guy. He didn't know what was going on, and it was starting to scare him a bit. He got back in his room, and he thought about the high-pitched squeaking, and what was happening, and then he drifted to sleep. And now this part really gave me a jump scare. Like... The narrator wakes up to that high-pitched laughter again, but it was closer, and it was so loud to hear it, I was like, holy crap, and this is what the laugh sounds like. <laughs> I was like, what? What the heck? And then I realized I didn't turn down my volume. But anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> the narrator was like, oh no, that person's back. What do they want with me now? So he peeks out and he sees a mascot of Chucky. And he jumps back in horror. I'm like, holy crap. 
The narrator stumbled out of bed, but then when he looked out his window, he saw it was gone, so he closed the blinds. And then he realized, hey, it could have been one of my co-workers or those people back there. <sighs> That's why they're giving me these comments and these stares and how they're s whispering about me behind my back. You know what? If this continues, I'm going to give John a piece of my mind. So the next day, the guy goes to his work, but he saw there was the police there. The police mentioned that somebody stole an animatronic of Chucky. That's when the narrator seemed peeved. Like, who would want to do that? At home, the narrator suddenly was home alone. His mom was with his sick grandma and the dad was out working late. So the narrator was watching TV in his room, but the narrator was still a bit paranoid and really scared until his phone rang while he was trying to sleep. The narrator was annoyed, but somebody left a message. At first the narrator didn't want to hear it, but then he decided, maybe it has something to do with my sick grandma, maybe it's bad news. So. He answered the message and he realized it's John. And this part really gives me the heebie-jeebies. Just makes my skin crawl. He says, I'm sorry. Truly, this is nothing personal. We needed you. We needed someone. He's getting hungry. I'm like, what? He needs to eat or else. And he's talking about your sacrifice won't be in vain, yada yada. I'm like, oh my god, this is so creepy. The narrator thought this was just a joke and decided to call the police. But while he did, that Chucky robot was in his room and he was coming close. The narrator was freaked out and so he opened his window and jumped out. He ran for the hills for his life. But then he came back to his house to see the police was there, the Chucky robot was gone, and the narrator told the police and his dad what had happened. And so, the Chucky e. Cheese place turned out. In the beginning of the story was the missing teenagers that was on the news. Well, they found the missing teens, but it was their corpses that they found. They're dead and they have been, yeah, it's pretty gruesome. So that Chuck E. Cheese place was closed down and nothing became of John the manager. But what's even more horrifying is that Chucky e. robot could still be out there, still killing people. I'm like, oh great. You know, whoever made this creepy pasta must be really a big fan of Five Nights at Freddy's, right? Yeah, so it was a pretty good story, but oh my gosh, creep me out. I never really like animatronics or puppets for that matter. I always found them so creepy. But yeah, that's my review, but it's a, it's a really good one, but it's also really creepy. <laughs> oh man, thank you, Mr. Nightmare. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening and watching. See you next time. I'm Katherine Donovan.